Continuing now with the analysis of the ox mill, this is now a closer look <clears throat> at the central point. Basically we have a disc with a cage around it where the ox driver can stand or she can stand and then on this we have five arms. This is a, currently a wooden shaft here. It's a wooden shaft. It goes all the way back and it slides into a metal shoe. It goes all the way back to the end and here where the comes back this point here is the next arm that comes out. So basically there's five arms like this. And the reason we chose five arms is because that is roughly the, the, the maximum use of the space we can to get as many teams of oxen in here if we wanted to, if we get that far. This is the most crucial place, um, how the whole thing connects. You can see here, this is the head of the main, the main shaft that goes down, takes all the drive. Here's my fingers on it to get a rough idea how big it is. It's about a three inch diameter metal shaft. And here you can see part of the keyway. If you can see down into the hole there. But there is a, a metal key <coughs> that fits in half a, this again, look at my finger. It's almost an inch. My finger almost an inch uh, long or wide. So it's quite a substantial piece of metal <clears throat> because you're connecting this turning circle you get this turning circle with the main shaft so this point is critical the calculations you're going to have to base in terms of newton meters are that each if you want to build this for 10 oxen then you're going to have to have and these arms are five meters long so the estimation is assuming the oxen weigh <clears throat> just over a ton so you've got two and a half ton, two th so two and a half ton of oxen, a pair of oxen on each arm, multiplied by, uh, divide by 10 to give you the average kind of force of energy on each ox. So you've got 100 and 220 kilograms of potential load multiplied by five because the length of the arm. That gives you uh, 1,100 kilograms of load and turn that to Newton meters you multiply it by 10 so it's 11,000 and then five arms is 56,000 Newton meters that's a huge amount of torque and that's only if they're basing their energy on one tenth of their body weight if they put the whole weight into it then it could be a massive so anyway this is the general point that this this particular point has to has to hold on to so if i just got up inside and have a closer look at how the mill is configured now standing inside the main capstan the main head the arms come back and five arms I'll go down a little bit closer detail. <clears throat> the five meter arms, the bulls <clears throat> walk about two revolutions per minute. Oops. Now we go to the underneath and we can see vaguely the main shaft coming down there's a big huge piece of metal there to take the keyway and some bearings to hold the metal <coughs> the frame that holds all the cogs together and now we come down to the bottom cog it's big wheel here this one is 97 teeth so this is going around at two revolutions per minute and that transfers the load to a smaller tooth and Piece of paper with the information I just wrote down a moment ago. So this big teeth is feed onto small teeth, and that one has 18 teeth. These gear, these cogs actually come from a metal pressing system. 
So it's a, more as we're recycling an old piece of engineering. So again, this one's got 97 teeth. This one has 18 teeth. That's about 5.38 revolutions for each revolution of this. And this is connected to this one, which goes at the same speed. And this one here has 132 teeth. And this one is connected to, I'll come around here, to this one. And this one has 22 teeth. So this one and this one speeds up by six. So the calculations is two revolutions per minute multiplied by 5.38 multiplied by six. And it goes down into a shaft, which goes down under the ground here through its metal sheet. And about a foot under there is a bevel gear, which changes the direction of the rotation. And that has a two to one ratio. So again, it speeds up by another two. And then you can see this metal plate runs all the way along. And the shaft under here is simply old truck axles. Truck, not truck axle, but truck um, uh, shafts, rotating shafts. We basically connect them together piece by piece to take the whole thing along to the, uh, to the barn. Uh, inside the working area, which we'll, I'll go to shortly. While we've been looking at that, <clears throat> two oxen have been secured to this system. Again, this is simply uh, for one team of bulls, so they're connected directly to the shaft. The pulley wheel has no part to play in this particular configuration. That is for when you've got more than one team. So this is connected to a shaft and then we're onto a chain which comes back to the center point in between the two oxen and more or less we just hook it on to this hook. This is a safety hook. We have used cheaper ones with an alum, red ones with an aluminium latch, but they just break off. So the bulls can't eat. This one is a much safer system, a little more substantial. And then back to the yoke and then the normal yoking system with the oxen. They have reins on, but once they're going, we won't be using these reins. It's really just to use to bring them into position. In terms of placements, we have the slower ox on the inside and the faster ox on the outside. This is all while they're walking around the book, walking their normal pace. In this case, we have Shukadev, our best ox, on the inside, the right side. <clears throat> and on the left, we have Partha, who's a younger ox, and hopefully will walk a little faster. This is Kevin, he used one of our brahmacharya of the temple, putting down some straw just to make it more comfortable for the oxen to walk around. And uh, sometimes when you've got, as I mentioned the other time, you get up concrete, there's a possibility that they can slip. So as they pass manure, put some straw on the floor, <coughs> gives them some grip and uh, makes it <coughs> more easy for them. If they're feeling not secure on the foot, they may not like to walk uh, very far forward and certainly we don't want them to slip over so a little bit of straw down onto a concrete base makes it more comfortable now we're going to go <clears throat> inside this is the milling room came through the door, you can see the mill outside, and then the metal, you can more or less see the metal runway from here, comes all the way under the floor, comes up inside the room here, and there's a big, a big chain. This chain is quite substantial, it's about uh, two inches, two inches um, wide, and that's the main drive chain. 
and that's coming up here. We calculated about 130 revolutions per minute. 